What's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul with Liberty Hill Comics, where I share my passion and over 40 years of experience comic book collecting, investing, and conservation with you. Today, we're continuing the conservation project for this copy of Flash number 123, the first appearance of the Golden Age Flash Jay Garrick in the Silver Age, and the first acknowledgement of an alternate reality in which the Golden Age heroes exist which is the beginning of the multiverse concept in comic books. Published in September 1961 by DC, it was written by Gardner Fox and drawn by Carmine Infantino. It is also the first appearance in the Silver Age of Golden Age Flash villains, The Fiddler, The Thinker, and The Shade. This is a huge Silver Age key without which the multiverse concept in both DC and Marvel Comics wouldn't exist. In Episode 1, we completed a thorough assessment of this book and developed a conservation game plan. The cover had a small hole in it, but the major flaw we uncovered is that it appears someone spilled a can of Coke on the interior of this comic book and wraps 1, 6, 7, and 8 were affected fairly dramatically. Wrap 8 is the centerfold, which appeared to be ground zero for the spill, and also has a spine split we need to address. Here is our conservation plan for the book, including disassembly, wet cleaning, deacidification, resizing for the cover, stain removal for the inner wraps, tear seals, cold press, reassembly, folding, and final press. In episode 2, we disassembled the book to prepare for the coming work, setting aside the staples for use during reassembly later, carefully noting both the position and the orientation of each staple, and safely storing the interior pages away in mylar whilst we work on the cover. In episode 3, we completed work on the cover. We performed a total of three aqueous baths, each for five minutes. The first had a primary function of wet cleaning and contained a surfactant as well as calcium hydroxide in warm water. The second bath's primary function was to rinse away residual contaminants and the surfactant and consisted of calcium hydroxide in warm water. The last bath had a primary function of resizing the cover and contained methyl cellulose as a resizing agent along with calcium hydroxide to leave an alkaline reserve in the comic book to protect against future acid catalyzed hydrolysis of the paper. The rationale, formulae, calculations, and methods for all of these processes are explained in detail in my video on Advanced Comic Book Cleaning, Deacidification, and Resizing Methods which you can view by following the link to that video if you're interested. After all of the wet work was done, we completed an archival tear seal and began our drying and cold press process. The results were phenomenal, a cover which was dramatically brightened without substantial loss of ink, and the tear seal strengthened the page and was essentially invisible. The resizing will strengthen the paper and make it water resistant and we used no harsh chemicals that would provide aesthetically pleasing short-term results, but long-term damage to the paper. In episode 4, we started treating the stains on the interior wraps. Our approach was to start with the least invasive method on the wrap with the most severe staining, which was the centerfold, and regularly check our progress and step up to more invasive methods as necessary. Then, once we achieve the best result our knowledge and skills will afford us on the centerfold, we'll apply that method to the remaining pages so that we don't have a difference in paper quality or any remaining stains from wrap to wrap on the interior of the comic book. Our first step was a 500 milliliter wash consisting of 20% saturated calcium hydroxide in warm water with five drops of Triton X100 for 20 minutes. Triton X100 is a surfactant, and the primary goal of this first aqueous bath is washing or cleaning the paper. 
We followed this with a 300 milliliter bath of 33% saturated calcium hydroxide solution in tap water, but with concurrent exposure to our 465 nanometer wavelength blue LEDs at four inches for one hour. After this procedure, we dried the page and cold pressed it to have a look at the progress so far on the stains. We made considerable progress on the stains and retained good ink and paper integrity, but I felt we could do better. In particular, the first wash was very dirty, and upon reflection, I didn't like the page sitting in the really dirty wash for 20 minutes. So, we have both more work to do on the wrap and ideas for tweaks to the method for the next wrap. If you wish to watch any of those episodes before watching this one, just click on the playlist I've created for this project. Today, we're going to continue working on the stained centerfold and step up the invasiveness of our approach one more notch. Let's get started with the materials and methods and I'll provide the scientific background of the procedure once our process is underway. So you'll understand how I've developed the method I'm about to show you based on my knowledge of the literature and experience putting that knowledge to practice. I'm starting off with my hobby mat that you've seen me use before, and I've laid a piece of Holytex down on the hobby mat. I've just sprayed it with a solution of 25% saturated calcium hydroxide and 0.5% hydrogen peroxide. To this I've placed the page which has been dried and we used for the intermediate photos just to check our progress. Then another layer of Holytex and another spraying with the same solution. 25% saturated calcium hydroxide with 0.5% hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to allow this solution to saturate the page and we'll flatten it with our squeegee before moving on to adding our LEDs for photo bleaching. Now for some of that background while we wait for the paper to saturate. Aqueous baths generally and deacidification specifically, especially when you're leaving behind an alkaline reserve in the paper, strengthen paper when performed properly. They not only strengthen the paper but improve the permanence, meaning they slow the future degradation of the paper, so they strengthen it now and in the future. A simple wash goes a very long way toward removing contaminants, tanning, soiling, stains, and acids, and is often underappreciated by conservators. Too often, in my opinion, we go straight to more invasive procedures. Just because we have these tools does not mean we should use them for every job. Here you see how I use the squeegee to flatten the page, remove any air bubbles, and to ensure that the page is uniformly saturated before we move on to photo bleaching. As I was saying, just because we have more invasive tools for conservation does not mean we should use them for every project. For me, two of these more invasive tools are photo bleaching and the use of hydrogen peroxide. To be clear, both have been demonstrated definitively by the conservation literature to damage paper. Yet, when used correctly and with other tools, both have their place in our conservation toolboxes. But I do not use them for every project because they do damage paper, if ever so slightly, and therefore, I only use them when necessary. For those of you interested in a deep dive on photo bleaching for conservation, the background, history, and how the literature suggests it's best used, check out my video on my method to photo bleach and deacidify comic books with the link provided. All right, now that we've got the page fully saturated, flat, all air bubbles removed, I'm putting these four inch PVC spacers down. Then I'll place this lid to a sweater box, which has some reflective tape on it, and my 465 nanometer blue LEDs. 
I'm going to switch these on and leave them on for 30 minutes. And while they're working to lighten our page, I'll provide more of the background on bleaching and paper conservation. For those interested in a deep dive into the conservation literature on the subject, a great review of bleaching and conservation is aptly titled Bleaching and Paper Conservation by Anthony W. Smith, published in the journal Restorator in 2012. Although it is a great overview of bleaching and conservation, one needs to dig a bit deeper into the primary literature for specific materials and methods. One study that was particularly influential on my view of bleaching for comic book conservation was Bleaching Revisited Impact of Oxidative and Reductive Bleaching Treatments on Cellulose and Paper Also published in Restorator, in this case in 2009, by two authors for whom I have no idea how to pronounce their names, and for that I apologize. In this study, the authors use historical paper samples and subject them to many different bleaching options, including hydrogen peroxide and photobleaching, and they use analytic methods to determine bleaching effectiveness as well as the paper degradation caused by the bleach both immediately after the bleaching and after accelerated aging. The two methods that were effective at bleaching and had the least degradation on the paper were 0.5% hydrogen peroxide and photobleaching. In this graph from their paper, they show the effect of the various treatments on the molecular weight of the cellulose fibers in the paper. As cellulose molecules break down, the average molecular weight of the cellulose chains decreases, and this leads to paper weakening and eventually failing and crumbling away. So, higher bars are better for paper strength and permanence. You can see from the graph that while neither are especially strong bleaches, importantly, 0.5% hydrogen peroxide and photobleaching have the highest bars for molecular weight, similar to the control with accelerated aging, indicating neither had an appreciable effect on paper degradation relative to the control. Also note that although 0.5% hydrogen peroxide and 3% hydrogen peroxide had similar bleaching power, that is to say they were pretty weak bleaches, the 3% hydrogen peroxide did measurable damage to the molecular weight of the cellulose chains in the paper, while 0.5% hydrogen peroxide did not. For this reason, I never use hydrogen peroxide at higher than 0.5% for comic book conservation. Higher concentrations just aren't justified because they damage paper and are not significantly more effective at bleaching. After studying this paper, and a lot of practical application of the information for comic book conservation, combining the two safe and effective methods for bleaching made a lot of sense to improve the efficacy of bleaching and hopefully retain the mild nature of the treatment with respect to preserving the molecular weight of the cellulose chains. So, that is how I arrived at the methods I'm showing you here, combining the two safe and effective paper bleaching methods into one simple and robust method that yields good results in a relatively short period of time, but importantly, does not appreciably impact the paper integrity. Remember, our goal as conservators should always be to use the absolutely least invasive method available to us to deal with any conservation problem we face. And if we err, it is far better for the comic book we are trying to preserve to err on the side of not doing enough rather than doing too much. The hydrogen peroxide is being consumed during this photobleaching process. It is breaking down into water and oxygen, and that process is accelerated by our calcium hydroxide solution, which is basic, and the light energy from our LEDs striking the hydrogen peroxide molecules. For this reason, we need to periodically refresh our bleaching solution. So, after 30 minutes, I turn off the LEDs, 
Remove the excess spent bleaching solution with my squeegee and reapply our 0.5% hydrogen peroxide and 25% saturated calcium hydroxide solution by spray before replacing the LEDs and turning them back on for another 30 minutes. In the interest of keeping the video shorter, I've skipped over these steps, but I've already shown you how I applied the solution at the beginning of the video, and I'll show you how I squeegee it dry at the conclusion of the two hours. In my experience, doing this procedure four total times, for a total of two hours, has been safe and effective at removing all but the most stubborn stains. This process could probably be used for longer, but I've never found the need to go longer than two hours total as long as I'm refreshing the solution every 30 minutes and I started with a good cleaning of the paper beforehand as we did here with our Triton X100 wash. So far, this is the least invasive yet still effective method I found for stubborn stain removal on comic book inner wraps. While I remove the photo bleaching setup and demonstrate how I squeegee the page dry, and using paper towels and granite slab to complete the drying process, I'd like to comment on the concept of always using the least invasive methods and materials available to us. I know several prominent conservators use chloramine tea, and I know Talus sells it for this purpose. Several of my viewers have asked me about its use for comic book conservation, so I'm going to address it here. I don't use chloramine tea for comic book conservation because I'm very concerned that it produces a great effect in the short term, but does long-term damage to the paper structure. The conservation literature is clear on the subject. Chloramine tea forms irreversible bonds with metal ions in the paper and cannot be rinsed out. It therefore continues to reside within the paper after treatment, no matter how much rinsing is performed. There, it continues to oxidize the cellulose molecules of the paper, which is very bad for the longevity of the comic book. This can take months or years so unless you're monitoring your results that long, you may believe the paper is fine, but the chlor, which is bound within the paper, is continuing to destroy it long after chloramine T treatment. Here is a list of peer-reviewed papers presenting data that chloramine T causes long-term damage to paper. There are simply safer alternatives that work as well or better and for these reasons, museums and library conservators consider chloramine tea to be obsolete as a conservation tool and no longer use it for paper conservation. I'll put this list of citations in the video description if you want to do your own homework on the subject. I've squeegeed the entire page two times. And remember that I'm not squeegeeing right over the paper. This is a Holytex sandwich. So I'm gently dragging the squeegee over the surface of the Holytex. And it glides nicely. Make sure you're using a squeegee that doesn't have any snags or nicks in it. If you've used a squeegee for other purposes around the house, sometimes they're soft plastic. They can get a little nick or scratch. You do not want to use that here because it will snag the Holytex and cause a problem, potentially damage your paper. Once I have it reasonably dry, I'm just going to pull my hobby mat out of the way, set down some paper towels, which obviously I reuse. That's why there's a little bit of cockling to the paper here. We're going to set our page on a layer of two, a doubled up layer of paper towels get it reasonably well centered so that the absorbency of the blotting that we're going to get from the paper towels is relatively uniform in the paper. And then I'll place two more paper towels on top and my repurposed granite slab that is left over from a kitchen remodel that I cut and polished for just this purpose. Because I squeegeed the page relatively dry, I'm going to leave these paper towels 
the first set for about 30 minutes. Then I'll swap them out, leave it about four hours. Then I'll do one more swap, leave it about 12 hours or overnight. Then the page will go into my Masterpiece 350 seal press between a few pages of Bristol paper, and we'll compare the results before and after. Here are the before and after pictures of the page, and I think we've achieved a phenomenal result. I completed the archival tear seal on camera, but decided not to show it in this video, because if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you've seen me perform that task many times, and this video was getting a bit long. Needless to say, the repair is at the bottom of the page and is essentially invisible. To be frank, I wasn't certain when we set out to remove the stains from this page, yet retain the vibrant inks and paper quality, if it was going to be possible. Given that I refuse to use invasive methods that might yield a good short-term result, but will be detrimental to the paper permanence in the long term. But I think this result demonstrates that doing your research, practicing your craft, and patiently applying what you have learned sometimes pays huge dividends. Remember that this centerfold was ground zero for the stains that I surmised were a spilled can of coke, and it had the darkest stains of all the wraps. I used very bright studio light to take these photos, and you can still see the faintest outline of the worst stains in our after picture. But in normal reading light, the stains are all but gone. In normal light, these are barely perceptible areas that look just to be slight differences in the tanning of the pages over time. I'm super pleased with the process I developed based on the conservation literature and thrilled with this outcome. Most importantly, we know the paper is stronger and has greater permanence than when we started, and with proper storage conditions can be expected to last for a few centuries. I sincerely appreciate you joining me today for the conservation project featuring this key Silver Age comic book. Most of the materials we're using for this project, including the chemicals used in the aqueous baths, the photo development tray, hobby mats, LEDs, fixtures, etc., are available from Amazon in the affiliate links in the video description. If you need any of them for your own conservation efforts, I appreciate you using those links. If you enjoyed this video, please take a few seconds to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment, and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps me get the word out about the channel and our comic book conservation efforts. Next episode, we'll address the remaining wraps, and we won't be that far from wrapping up this project. Until next time, take care of one another.